recently about the difference between the nature, our physical nature, and our spiritual nature, and the different plane that God has us on. And I want to kind of continue that theme today, because last week I was talking about overcoming evil with good, and so this week I want to talk about being an overcomer and, and overcoming. And I would like to look at the scripture in 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5 here, uh, because there are things here that we need to know and understand and that can help us in this regard and certainly is a charge that we find from John as he's writing and reminding of this. So he says to us in verse 4 of First John chapter 5, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. Now, remember we we read there in Jesus' prayer today, Richard read that for us in John chapter 17, where Jesus says, we are not of the world, he is not of the world, but he's sending us back in the world and that, and that we must be one, that he hasn't lost any, and they're talking about the, you know, the evil one and evil in the world, et cetera, et cetera, but we're not part of the world. So what, is, what does that mean and what is Jesus uh, praying for us in that regard? The thing that I find astounding in that particular scripture is that Jesus makes a statement, they are not of the world as I am now of the world. And I'm saying, Lord, what are you talking about? Um, I find myself too much mixed up in the world, the way the world does things. And in, in the world, that's not a problem. But in living the life that we're called to live, it is problematic, and we will take a look at that today. So we're called to be overcomers here. So he tells us here again, going back, for he overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. So we're talking about here a matter of trusting God in order to overcome the faith, uh, overcome the world, to believe in him. Who is it that has overcome the world? And I, I like this, only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. So let's take a look at that today, and here are the questions that we're kind of asking ourselves. Why should we overcome what we live in and are part of and Jesus is sending us into? You know, if you're sending us into the world, surely we should just be like chameleons and look like the world and act like the world. Why, why does he say this? Also, what does it mean to overcome? And has anyone been able to do this? Has anyone overcome the world? And if they have, how can it be done? And when are we to overcome? It's kind of like you've got this big challenge before you. When are you to do this? So let's back up to verse 1 of this chapter in 1 John chapter 5. Notice here, here what, and it leads us to understand the, the magnitude of what he's telling us. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. So we're talking about Messiahship because he is the Christ, he is the Messiah, and if we're that, we are born of God. So this born of God is important for us to understand. It is also important to understand that we understand who Jesus is. We understand the relationship that we have with Jesus, that we love the Father, and we also love Jesus as well. That's not necessarily true of the world. We have a, a, some people in the world with a multiplicity of gods believe in God, but not Jesus. There are people who believe in Jesus, but not as the Son of God, not born, in, you know, fully God, fully human, coming, the word, in the beginning, all of these things that we're familiar with and that we've come to believe, understand, and trust in that we have a Lord and Savior who was tempted in all points as we are, and I'm kind of giving away who, who is the only one to overcome the world, tempted in all points as we are, yet without sin, and then tells us that we can come boldly before his throne of grace in our time of need. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 through 14, not in your notes. So it, we find Jesus is central to overcoming. 
believing, uh, you know, it's about believing who he is and what he is doing. So we kind of got to go back a ways into, in, in some sense, one of the oldest scriptures in the Bible, it, which is in, for, in John chapter 1 and verse 1, it says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. Everything that was made was made by him. He came into the world. He was a light to the world. The darkness didn't comprehend it. And then it tells us in verse 14, that he was made flesh, he became one of us, full of grace and truth. So we believe that Jesus is fully human, fully divine, he is our Lord, he is our Savior, he has overcome the world. So what does that mean? We believe that Jesus is the Christ, he is begotten of God. With that, we also believe Jesus' kingdom's teachings, the things that he taught. Now, for us to also understand about overcoming, we have to overcome misunderstanding. So one of the prime examples of misunderstanding and overcoming even what we've understood and the way in which we've understood it in times past is the example of Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a a, a religious man. He, He was one who recognized that Jesus had done all kinds of incredible miracles. He acknowledged that. And he acknowledges him as being a rabbi. This is much like people acknowledging um, Jesus as just being a prophet who lived, was a good guy, back then, is dead, gone. That's the end of the story. We, We have that. That's where you only acknowledge that he existed. He is among other prophets that existed. When you just call him a rabbi, it's obvious you miss who he really is. And Nicodemus did. So Jesus makes a statement to Nicodemus, and this is talking about, this is John, of course, chapter 3, verse 1 through 7, where he's saying, look, Nicodemus, unless you are born again. Now, this again, Nicodemus asks the natural question. What do you mean, born again? How can I climb back into my mother's womb and be born again? He didn't understand the spiritual intent of that. You cannot, in, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God without that. So you got, there has to be a transformation. There has to be a born again process there. So we see that in order to see the kingdom, understand what God wants us to, to understand, we have to appreciate that. Now Jesus makes another statement in reference to the world. In John chapter 18, verse 36, he makes this statement, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, then would my servants fight. So he's making a delineation that his kingdom is not worldly, as we would know that. Now, I also want, and I'm I'm doing this rather quickly today in the light, but you have the notes. But in in John chapter 15, we want to see what Jesus says about the relationship that that he himself had and that he tells his disciples that they will also face. So we begin here in verse 18. And Jesus is giving them a warning in terms of the world. And he says, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. Now that's a pretty harsh statement when you use the word hate. So Jesus is saying, if the world hates you, you got to realize it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. So now this is giving us a little context. If we want to get along in the world, if we act like the world and the like, then they will love you. And generally speaking, as far as the world is concerned, uh, you're going to, life is going to be a little bit simpler. Just like in every culture, if you live within that culture the way the culture lives and thinks and all that, you get along a whole lot better. Uh, And we've seen that happen through all kinds of situations. I mean, people can be brutal to other people, but if everybody does it, we do it. Uh, But because that's their world and the way in which they see things. So he's, he's telling them they would love you. As it is, you, now this is what he says, as it is though, you do not belong to the world. But I have chosen you out of the world. Now, this, again, is interesting and encouraging. Jesus is saying, I have chosen you, and and I've chosen you not 
to belong to the world. The world today is a challenging environment for Christian believers and followers of Jesus Christ. Looking for answers? Grace Communion International local churches in Fairfield, Santa Rosa, and Modesto offers a comforting environment for Christians in search of spiritual growth and development. Contact a local ministry. Attend a local GCI churches at the times listed on your screen.